My mother, Dora Mae Smith, was born on the 25th of May, 1894, in St George's Road in Camberwell, in South London. She had been born about 10 past 10, as far as I can remember, in the evening. And according to her mother, everybody said it was the most dreadful day because her poor father was in terrible pain. He wouldn't go to Guy's Hospital where they had a bed waiting for him because he didn't want to leave his wife until he knew her baby was safely born and that she and the baby were all right. So it had, you know, stories about it when I was a child that day and I got the impression that everybody was in a real state that day and they really didn't know what they were doing because they were all so worried. However, my mother's father died six weeks later in Guy's Hospital of gangrene poisoning and this meant that when my um, grandmother wanted to have a nice child time with her new baby, there she was having to earn a bit of money to help keep them. And the way she did this was to buy things from stalls. She would then take it home and launder it and mend it. She would also get items which needed tools and, and um, what are those things, nails and tacks and things to be put in them to repair them and make them fit to sell. But that way she helped to f um, finance her family life. And all I have heard about that time was obviously a family getting together, children and mother and the mother's sister and the mother's uh, sister-in-law's husband for a bit until he went and died also. And they all tried to help each other and manage to live as comfortably as they could. I don't think my mother ever complained about the fact that um, her family didn't bother about her. And she did, in fact, always say to me how grateful she was to have them and how exceedingly pleased she was that no matter what happened, you could always rely on one member or other of your family helping you out if you were in need. In the end, my mother got reached the age of 14, left the church school where she'd been educated, and her mother managed to get her an apprenticeship for seven years so that she could become an opera cloak cutter. This always sounded a bit odd to me, but what it actually meant was that you learn to cut really beautiful and quite expensive often, they were, materials, and they were turned into opera cloaks and other glamorous items of clothing for people going out to theatres and other places, and also for more formal visits around their home. Anyway, my mother was quite proud of the fact that she um, mastered this art. And then she met my father. Now, my father um, was not particularly uh, pleasing to my mother's stepfather because he came from a family that was Roman Catholic and almost entirely and um, my mother's stepfather was terribly worried in case he insisted on my mother and me when I was born 
becoming Roman Catholics. He needn't have worried because the one thing I knew about my father's family was that they cared nothing for what people were. They, if they wanted to belong to one political party or one church, then that was their business, nobody else's. They would never have dreamt of interfering, but of course, I don't think he realised that and he obviously didn't trust them. But however, in time, he came to be fond of my father and he said to my mother one day, when she had already been married for several years to my father, she, he said, I really think he is the best of my son-in-laws. He is a man who really thinks about you. So she was glad that he was pleased, um, you know, with my father. Um, there were several things that happened during the years of her marriage. For instance, Stephen must stop, I've got this. Um, sorry. It's okay. Um.